website for your business and don't worry, there is no coding involved as we'll be using a drag and drop page builder and this tutorial is also designed for complete beginners in just four easy steps. First, we're going to take care of our hosting and domain name registration. Then we're going to install WordPress and we're going to install our WordPress theme. And finally, we're going to look at how we can customize our website to make it our own. So let's wait no further and let's dive right into it. Okay, guys, so the very first thing we're going to do is take care of our hosting and the menu registration. Because without hosting and the menu registration, people won't be able to access the website. So this is step one, the most essential one, of course. So for that, we're going to go to our website, which is the videos. And for that, we're going to go to mrwebreviews.com, like this here, mrwebreviews.com, and you can add hosting at the end, just like you can see here, forward slash hosting. So if you add that, it will be straight to a hosting special page, or you can click immediately on my website on this link here that says hosting. So if you click on this, as I said, it will bring you to a co-branded page that will have the hosting. So what is that a co-branded page? What is the difference basically? With this page, we will get access to special offers, special discounts, which are negotiated with hosting, along with uh, and as I'm going to show you the few minutes, you will be able to use a special promo code for additional discounts as well. And as you can see, they offer you, let me show you again, right here, just a second, for so up to 80% discount as you can see. So this is a great, great amount of discount, of course, 80%, uh, this is quite a lot to be honest. So, with that, you can save a lot of money, number one. But not only that, I also give you a promo code in a minute and explain you everything about that, which will give you an access to additional discounts on top of that. So as you can see with hosting, we are connected with three different hosting packages. So we have the single, premium, and business. So let me zoom in a little bit first. It's a bit easier to read. There you go. So what's the difference between those two things? So as you can see, the single is for just one website. So if you are paying towards more than one website, please bear in mind this one is for one website only, and those two up to 100 different websites. And then we have the scale space, obviously, 100, 100, and 200, and the amount of monthly visitors. So 10,000, 25,000, and 100,000. So depending on how busy you're planning to be on your uh, website, please bear that in mind as well. As you can see here, we have one email account for on the single one for the your domain name that can you, you can only have one email. So it could be info at your domain account at your domain or hello at your domain and that's it. With those two you can click as many email or uh, inbox as you want to so you can have info at hello at accounts at sales at and so on. Or maybe different names, you know of your uh, different maybe sales reps or uh, employees. So all those three have free SSL and with free SSL certificates. So what's a free SSL certificate? So the SSL certificate basically is the public next to your web address here. And you can see that signifies uh, that your website is secure for online payment. So very, very uh, crucially important in the if you are running an e-commerce website especially. So this one doesn't have free domain or Google Ads credit. So this is very important. Please bear this in mind because this is the decided factor. If you have to factor that in now, please bear this in mind that your free domain name is valued at $8.99 already. In the Google Ad Credits, as you can see, you're going to get free Google Ad Credits included with these two points, which you're not getting it with this one. So bear this in mind, of course, during the registration process. And this one also doesn't have any limited purpose. Okay, so this one is not as being the most popular. So it is a great starting point to be honest. Uh, you don't need the business to make it, but you can start up with this. And if this is not sufficient, you can always upgrade from the premium to the business plan. So I would highly advise you to select this one because it's the most beneficial uh, price wise, the best value for money. Let's put it this way. So let's go ahead with this. We're going to select this one. And in the next step, you can see here we have to choose our billing cycle. So, again, how you can select uh, the billing period? It could be 12 months, 24 months, or uh, 48 months. So, as you can see, if you select the 12 months, 
you get a saving of 45 percent. So as you can see, it will cost you 71 ACA, but it would normally cost you 141 ACA. So you save 60 dollars altogether. So this is actually a very impressive indeed. Now, if you uh, select 24 months, well, 71 times 2 should normally be 140. It's only 19 dollars, you see. So 140, 90, so you're saving again a massive, this is 172 dollars of savings. And if you were to uh, multiply 90 by 2, so normally for 40 points, it would be normally 180 dollars. And no, it's only an extra 15 dollars, 105. So, I mean, for 105 dollars, you get four years of hosting, including your domain name. This is an often value, to be honest, you know. But let's say you have a thing not too sure, you just want to try things out. So you can even select placement only. So let's say placement for now. And let's go ahead and do the next step. And as you can see here, you have to select a payment method. So you can say credit card, PayPal, so Coinbase, Coinbase. So this is if you wanted to pay with Bitcoin and all these uh, virtual currencies, online currencies. And then have Google Pay as well. So I'm just going to go ahead with PayPal for now. And then you proceed to the next step. So this is where I'm going to give you a promo code where you can save extra money again. So the normal price, one three one eighty eight, you save sixty dollars. The add tax on top, it costs you eighty eight dollars for a full year. Now you can add a coupon code here, and you can type it. We store where to use all in capital letters, just like that, and then you click on the plus sign. So it's normally eighty eight dollars. And after that, we have an extra savings of only 82 now. So this is the maximum saving you can have uh, from this website. So basically you say uh, it's 45%, 49% here, so almost half the price, plus an extra 7% with the master web we use. So there you go. And after that, put some payments. And then simply go through the checkout process. And once you've gone through the whole checkout process, you're going to receive a couple of emails from them with confirmation and all that. You have to confirm your email address, of course, you know, and then you get a link uh, straight to your admin panel. So, for that, after that, all you have to do basically is to click login, enter your credentials, and then you'll be redirected back to this screen here. So now from here we want to clean our free domain first because this is the most essential crucial part. Obviously, as you can see, you can claim your one hundred fifty dollars uh, ad credit uh, for the Google Ads uh, promo. But obviously, you cannot use this unless you have a website up and running. So you might keep this for a later. So the first step here is to claim our free domain. So for that, we're just going to click on claim domain. And as you can see, you can enter a domain name here. So let's say maybe you are uh, you run a plumbing uh, business, maybe an architect, an electrician, uh, and you're based in central London, let's say. So you might type in here, let's say London Plumber. And then you'll get different extensions so dot .com, dot .shop, dot .tech, dot .xyz, dot .me, dot .icu, dot .fun. Now, uh, that kind is uh, the most common one, obviously, you know, but bear in mind that being the most common one, uh, this uh, domain name might not be available, it might be taken already, you know. So, just type in here uh, the domain name that you wish to register. If it's not available, when you click on claim domain, if it says this uh, domain name is already taken, you have to try another variation. You might have to go through a few of them, you know, before you find the ideal one and one that's available and suitable to your requirements. So let's say you type londonplumber.com and then after that you click claim domain and if the domain name is available, it basically will register that domain name for you in just that one click. Simple as. And then after that we have to set up our premium hosting. So as you can see here, this is the next step for us. So we just click on this. And here we can see the message that says welcome to hosting. Hello. Follow the guided setup and your website will be live in a few minutes. So let's start. And we have to choose a domain name. So it's either an existing domain, so the one registered already, or you can choose a domain that is uh, registered from the previous step. So I went ahead and registered bestlondonplumber.com. So just select this one. 
or you could again additionally buy a new domain if you wanted to. But we did that in the previous step, so select the same domain that you registered in the previous step. So click select. In from here, which way do you want to go? So you can build a new website or migrate a new uh, website. So we're not going to select either of them actually. We're going to select this one here at the bottom. That says skip. I will start from scratch because that's what we're going to do. We're going to start from scratch. So click on this one here. And as you can see, we have our best London primary.com uh, domain name registered and attached to this account. And they let us know that the server is based in the Netherlands. And then all we have to do after this is click finish setup and that's it. And then once you set up your hosting, you can go back to your health panel, so your admin panel for hosting, and access your website from here. So as you can see, you have your hosting that's set up now here, right here. And all you have to do basically from here is to click on the domain name itself or the manage button. I don't know. So let's click on this one here for now. Let's just say anyways. And this is the next panel from where you can actually uh, choose everything and configure everything on your website. So now let me scroll down quickly. As you can see, you have the WordPress settings here, other accounts, emails, domains, websites, files, database, advanced, other. So this might look like a lot, but trust me, it's very easy to handle. I'm going to show you in very few steps actually. So what we're going to do now, basically, as you can see, we have WordPress here. So we have WordPress dashboard, WordPress plugins. But we're not going to use this immediately. We have to set up our website first. And for this, we go to websites. And as you can see, we have a link in here that says auto install. And we're going to click on this one. So click on this. And it's going to ask us what do you want to install. Do you want to install WordPress? WordPress with WooCommerce, Gmail, or something else. So personally, we're going to use WordPress because this is the most popular. And I believe I'm not wrong, 34% of the internet, uh, of the websites on the internet are using WordPress at the moment, so this is a staggering amount indeed. So what we do now basically is click on WordPress, this one. So now if you wanted to set up a, um, a WooCommerce, a WooCommerce, the difference between those two, this is if you wanted to set up an e-commerce website, but uh, I'm not going to take care of this in this uh, tutorial, it's just for a simple website at the moment. So let's click on WordPress for now. And as you can see here, it's giving you, so you have to select, you want HTTP or HTTPS. So HTTPS basically will have the padlock like this, it's like your padlock. So you select HTTPS first, make sure that's your domain name that's selected here, and you leave this blank. So just put, not put anything here. And then you have to select a username. So I'm just going to put this to the web for the sake of this uh, tutorial, and you have to select a password. There you go. And then you put your email address here, so mine is hello at mrwebreview.com. And then you put a website title. So in our uh, instance here, it was London Promise, I believe it's what we selected. And everything else you can leave as is for now. And then select the update so you can have update only to minor version or always update to the latest available version. Just take this one here so your website will always be up to date. And after that, simply click on install. It is going to take a few minutes again, you know, and depending on how fast the internet connection is. And then from here, we're going to click on WordPress and then click on Dashboard. So we need it there, don't worry. So for HTTPS, we're going to click this. We're going to put the maintenance mode on or not. We don't need all these at the moment. So all we need, need basically now is just once we click on this, click Edit Website. And we're going to be redirected to our WordPress dashboard in just a few moments. So welcome to our WordPress dashboard. As you can see, this is our WordPress dashboard with all the different uh, settings. So we have a quick preview of everything that's happening on our website. So you can do a bit of cleaning from a quick close this. Because all these tabs it's up to you. It's always uh, nice to have a clean working environment. So as you can see on the left hand side, we have all the menus, different menu tabs and all that. And this is a preview from all the tools that we are working on. So if I want to click on post, this will display all our posts. If I click on pages, we'll see all our pages. If I click on appearance, 
to this guy to do with our theme and what the website looks like. I click on tools, these are all our tools and settings as well. So let's start from the beginning. So as you can see, I'm going to show you what our website looks like at the moment. So this is the basic 2021 um, WordPress theme, which is quite basic and not very appealing at all. As you can see, it's quite like quite basic. Okay, so from step first, let's install a theme. So we're going to appearance, themes, and we're going to click on add new. And in the search box here, you're going to type in Astral. So this is the one here, the very first one, Astra. And you're going to click on Install. There you go. And all we have to do after this is just click Activate. There you go. So our theme is now installed and activated. Okay, so the very first step is to take care of our plugins. So let's go do a bit of cleaning first. As I said, I can see we have two plugins here that are totally unnecessary, so you can just put both of them and select so delete and then apply. Are you sure? Yes, because we don't need them at all. And as you can see by default with hosting, we have a light speed cache that's installed, and you want to deactivate this as you. But while you're working on the website, we don't want this to be uh, on because the caching basically will uh, use a uh, cache and we won't be able to see immediately the changes that we are making on our website. We can reactivate it afterwards, basically. So this is just to speed up our website and uh, improve the visitor's experience. So next step is to actually improve the look of our website and we install a theme. So for this, we're going to appearance, themes. So we click on Add New, and in the search box, we're going to type in Astra. There you go. And then we're going to click on Install. So again, this is going to take a few moments, you know, depending on how fast the internet connection is. There you go. Install. And all we have to do after this is click Activate. So that's it. So our website uh, theme is actually installed and activated. So after this, what do we do? We hover on top here and click on theme details. And as you can see the button here that says Astra Options. So we'll click on this one now. And then we're going to click on the import starter template for this one here. So basically what it does is it will give us access to all the pre-made, pre-built templates. So we're going to save a ton of time using this feature here. So after this, you just click Install, Import, there you go. So it's activate, activating it already. There you go, activating. And now we have to select our page builder. So we can select among these four from Elementor, Beaver Builder, Gutenberg, and Breezy. So Gutenberg is the default one in WordPress. And then you have Breezy and Beaver Builder. Now, from experience, Elementor is by far the best, the more intuitive and the most uh, comprehensive one. So, for the next step, we're going to click on Elementor here. There you go. And as you can see here, we are presented with quite a few different templates. Uh, you can see we have an e commerce website here, we have a baby store. We have yoga classes, organic shop, uh, coffee, uh, yoga studio, etc. Et so it's a very large selection of different uh, pre built websites that you can use for your business. And as you can see, some of them have a tag, agency tag on them, the uh, premium version. So if you wanted to use any of these, you would have to get the premium version. But for the sake of this tutorial, we're just going to use the free tools. So let's go back up now. If you click on the drop down menu here, we can select free. And now all of these are free. So we said we're going to do a plumbing website. So what you can do basically, you can either scroll down and look for uh, maybe a template that uh, catches your eye, something you like. You might want to do something. So it's one of them, you know, uh, depending on your uh, preferences and all that. Or we can go by uh, theme. So if you want to type in plumbing here, as you can see, we have one here already. So this is a plumber. So if you wanted to see what this looks like, if you click on this, 
we have a page view. So we can scroll up and down each page. So this one will come with all these pages, pages, pages of home, about, services, testimonial, FAQ, and content. So if we scroll down, as you can see, this is not bad at all. So you could use this one. And you can always launch a different site, you know. And let's say, select this one. Okay. So if you click on this, now you can have a preview. So you might prefer this one. These colors might be more suited to your uh, requirements. Maybe you prefer the layout the way it is, you know. And you can always turn this into uh, a premium website, regardless, you know. So as you can see, this one comes with the home page, the other services, FAQ, and contact. So let's say we want to go ahead with this one. We, we, we find this one more appealing, more suitable for our business, our dynamic business. So how do we go about this? So we can import either pages separately, so just home, about, and services, for instance, or the complete site. So again, we'll in here for our tutorial, we're just going to import the complete site. So all you have to do basically is click import complete site, and then from here, just click import. Now, feel free to fill this out. It's just uh, then ask for uh, feel asking for feedback. But for the sake of our tutorial again, I'm just going to click skip. And as you can see, the import has started. So uh, this is going to take a few moments, maybe two or three minutes altogether. So what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to pause the video now and I'll meet you guys when the installation the import is completed. Okay, guys, so that took a, a couple of minutes, let's say. So I imported successfully. So you can just close this now. And if we go back to our website now, so this is what our website used to look like. And if we refresh, there we go. It's all done for us. As you can see, we now have a beautiful, fantastic, very professional looking website indeed. So all we have to do basically now is to change the content, change some pictures maybe, and make it our own. So I'm going to show you how to do that. And now that our website is installed, as you can see, anyone can access it from the outside world. And this is if you were just typing uh, your domain name, you would be able to access it. So what we need to do maybe now is just go back to plugins and install an additional plugin admin here. And in the search box, we're typing maintenance. And we're going to install this one here, the very first one from Web, web Factory. So install now. There you go, and then activate it. And then if we go to our maintenance tab here by the side, you can see that maintenance mode is actually on at the moment. So if we refresh our website here, as you can see, we can see everything. And as you can see here, maintenance is on. So bear in mind the maintenance is on. So what's the difference between us and anyone else? What I'm going to do is copy this. And we will open that in a new uh, web browser. I'm just going to do this. Enter. And as you can see, anyone else will see this screen. Maintenance mode is on. London terminals, so no one can access your website. Because you don't want anyone to uh, see the progress of your website while you're working on it. Obviously, you know, you can then switch off the maintenance mode only when you're ready, obviously. You know? So we're just going to keep on for the moment and save those things. Very good, very good. So let's go and change uh, the look of our website so we we'll make it more personal. So now let's go ahead and let's personalize this website to make it your own. So for this, we we'll go back to our uh, WordPress dashboard and we're going to click on pages. Okay, so in here, as you can see, we have the about this page, the contact page, the FAQ, home, privacy policy, sample page, and services. So the sample page, by default, you can crush it. We never use this one. So these are actually our pages from the website. As you can see, home, about the service, traffic, and content, and we have our home page, and this is our home page here. And if we hover on top of any of those pages, you can see we can either edit, quick edit, search the page, view the page, or edit with Elementor. And because we installed this theme using Elementor as a page builder, this is what we're going to use. So now I'm going to click on edit with Elementor. And there you go. This will give us access to the Elementor page builder now. So how does Elementor work? So on the left hand side, you have the menu with all the different elements. 
as you can see. Keynote section, heading, text editor, images, video, button, and if you scroll down with all these different features that you can use on your website. And on the right hand side, right here, we have all the different sections with all the different elements. So if you have on top, as you can see here, we have a small plus and X here on top here. So this indicates a section. So basically this is a section. And if we scroll down again, you can see this is another section. Every time you press those six dots in the X, this is a different section. So we keep scrolling down, this is a different section. Okay? And then every section is made out of different colors. So we have two colors here, one and two. So if I click on this one, if I click on this one, you can see it says edit section. If I click on this now, it says edit column. So this is a column again, yes? And then after this, each column is made out of different elements. So if you click on this one here, this is a heading, and this is a button. So if you scroll on the page, if you click on this, this is a section. So this is to edit the whole section. If I click on this, this is the column, and this column is made out of a heading and a text editor. So it's very straightforward and pretty simple to use indeed. Now let's go back up again. So how do you edit all these elements? It's very simple. You can just click on the small pencil here, and as you can see, we have the details here on the left hand side. So depending on the type of element that you are editing, you'll have you'll be presented with different options, obviously. And each one of them can be stylized as well. You have this style here, so it's going to be color, background color, you can choose your font. Uh, shadow, etc., etc., and this works as well for buttons. As you can see, if you go to style, you can select the type of font, the shadow you want to add, the text color, the background color, etc. If you take our heading here, it's the same again, you know. Okay, so let's edit our text section here. So, as you can see, we have a background picture here, but at the moment, uh, it's an electrician, obviously, with a freeze box and all that. So, we might want to change this to make it more uh, related. To our uh, business here, which is plumbing. So if you click on those six dots, and then if you can style, you can see this is our actual picture. And now we're going to replace that picture with another one. So we click on the picture itself, and as you can see, I'm going to go to upload files, and then select files. And I want to then download the picture with uh, uh, someone fixing a uh, sink. So let's open this. And then we're going to make sure we selected the picture just by clicking on it and then insert media. And as you can see, now we have someone with a wrench fixing a sink from underneath, which is absolutely fine. And then you can see here there's an overlay color, uh, a blue shaded uh, transparent color on top. So this is the background overlay here. So we might want to change this. So it's up to you. You can look at the opacity here by using this slider here button. So this is the picture uh, without any overlay, and as it increases, we can see the color is going to fade away, and it wants to the background you know, up to completely opaque. So let's say let's find a, a nice middle ground. What you want to find basically is uh, the contrast between your heading here and the background, so this font is easily readable. Basically, that's what you want. Once you find the sweet spot, maybe a point seventy eight. You can leave it as is. If you might want to change the color as well, it's really up to you. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this now, just in case you wanted to keep it. But if you wanted to go for, let's say, your company color or red, maybe maybe you want to change the color, you might use a red color instead, you know, and then match it to your uh, company colors. So you might go for different colors again, you know. But just go, we're going to keep the blue for now, anyways. And then once you open up with the result, click update. Always save your work just in case. Okay, so now from here we're going to go to the heading here. So obviously you are based in uh, London, let's say, and then you are providing uh, plumbing services. So this is the most important part of your website. So let's go back here and let's refresh. So this is called the above the fold. So before anyone, uh, your visitors can uh, scroll down, whatever they see here is the above the fold. So as you can see, this is called the hero section. So this is the first thing your visitors will be 
are presented with, the first point of contact. So you want to make sure that this is as easy and as strong as possible. The message here has to convey 100% what it is that you do and why people should be on your website. In here, you make it as simple as possible. Someone who lands on your website does never visit your website, does no idea what you do. What is it that you do? Put it in the most simplest way possible, as if you were to talk at a, to a five or six years old kid. So, what would you tell them? You were simply. So, let's simply put how many companies are in the greater London area. So you don't want to uh, put in something that's going to be trust and credibility, obviously. You don't want to put in a safe one in 2001 with a 4.8 star review on trust pilot. This would be trust and credibility for sure. And trust pilot is going to be one more, just like this. So that's it, basically, you know, very simple. And here you have a call to action. So a call to action. What do you want people to do? Do you want them to call them? Do you want them to fill out the form and request a call back? Do you want them to uh, request a quote, maybe? So you can have this form or not. But let's say if you're plumber, that basically all your business is coming from inquiries. So this is obviously what you want to do. So maybe this one here, if you established in 2001 with a 4 point star review on Trustpilot, you might use this link here, this button, to go to the Trustpilot website. So if you wanted to close it to uh, the text here, all you have to do basically is go to content, and as you say, it says no more. So maybe you want to say, uh, check and first pilot reviews. Why not? And that'd be great. So here you can just put the link, make sure this is going to your first pilot website, and that's basically it. When you happy with it, save. And your visitors will be regarded to your trust pilot page. And then you could go on your trust pilot website and get your, your uh, address actually. So I'm just going to go random here, just going to pick one here just for the, the sake of our uh, demo here. So if you were to select your uh, address on trust pilot, you just copy it here. And then you click on the icon here and you click on open a new window. You want to make sure that when people uh, click on a link on your website, they're not leaving your website. They're not leaving your website, basically, no. So click a bit. So let me close this now. And if we go back to our website and refresh, as you can see, we have public companies starting to go to London Array, established in 2001 with a 4.8 star review on Trustpilot. Set Trustpilot review, and if I click on this, it will bring you straight to your Trustpilot page. Now, this is just an example. You know, you can use anything else here, obviously, but just try to find something that's compelling enough that it's going to make uh, people want to stay on your website. So, let's look at this uh, form now. So, request a callback, or maybe you can request a custom quote. You will leave your problem. You might want to uh, request uh, get inquiries this way. Please complete the form. And then this is a form, as you can see. If I click on this now, it's bringing us to a short code. The short code back is when you're using a features from a different plugin outside Elementor. So if you go back to our progress board, and we're going to WB form. So as you can see here, this is a WP form uh, ID number six, number six. And if you go back here and click on WP form all forms, you can see there's two forms here, and this one is number six. WP for ID 6. So what we do is basically click on this to edit it. So as you can see, we have your name, email, contact number, purpose of contact, your message. And now we have a regular sale, purpose of contact, and your message. Now, to be honest, purpose of contact and your message is maybe redundant, so maybe you don't want this. So what we do, basically, is click on this, and we're going to bin it. So click on the bin, delete. Oh, no, sorry, not this one. Purpose of contact, this one here. Delete. Okay. So now we have your name, your email address, contact number, your message. So after this, we go into settings and we're going to notifications. 
So as you can see, here we have admin email. You're going to replace this with your own personal email address, the one you want to receive your emails in. So I'm going to hello and choose the web reviews.com. And once you finish, simply click save. And if we go back to our home page, now we refresh. And as you can see, this is our simplified form. And if I want to fill this out now, I'm going to put John. John Doe. And the email is john.doe.gmail.com. And we have a phone number, 01-234-5678. And the message, this is the first form the home page. And then we're going to click request a call. So as you can see now, it says, um, Thank you for contacting us. We will be in touch with you shortly. So as you can see, the confirmation message here, you can tweak that around as well. So as you can see, if you click on confirmation now, you can see here, thanks for contacting us. We will be in touch with you shortly. So you can tweak this around, make it your own, change it again, whatever you want to say, this message will be reflected back here. And every time you change something, don't forget to hit the save button. And this is basically the email confirmation I received. So, as you can see, it says new entry contact us, sent to hello at mrwebbies.com from John Doe. His email address is john.doe.gmail.com, his phone number, and then uh, this is the address from the home page. Okay, so let's customize the rest of our page. So, as you can see, we scroll down here, it's quite a lot for dedication, picture, and all that. So, let's go back to our elementor here. So again, it's the same principle, you know, you can change everything along. All you have to do is visit, click, it, click on it, and change the content. So I could change this to something else, you know, or uh, related to the planning industry or whichever industry you're in. And if you wanted to change uh, things along, maybe you wanted this to be on top and this on the bottom, all you have to do is you can drag and drop as well. So if I click the six small dots here, drag and drop. So as you can see now, it's highlighted in blue, and I can bring this. Uh, on top of the other section. So now we have the picture in this section first, and then quality work for dedication after. And it's the same for all these blocks, basically. You know, if you like this and you want this to be on top rather than at the bottom, you can just drag it and then go up the top of the page, as you can see, it just keeps falling up. And then you can drop it here. And now we can see now we have the six, the three reasons why people should choose it. And now we can choose this thing because we are uh, safe and secure, 24 7 uh, support, low cost, etc. etc. And now again, if you wanted to bring this one, maybe bring it down again instead of having it here, it's the same way. So just click and then drag it to the bottom of the page. So you need it and then drop it when you're ready. And there you go. And once you're happy with the results, again, don't forget, a very important step is to click update. So let's go and have a look at our changes now. If we refresh this page, continue. So as you can see now we have why choose us, try to work through dedication, those three boxes here, etc. etc. So back to our homepage very quickly just to show you a few things. If you wanted to change all these elements again, you can do it easily just by clicking on them. Same principle again, you know, very simple. And if you wanted to get rid of one of them or add an extra one maybe, all you have to do is click on the, the column and you can right click and then delete because maybe you have only two reasons, two good reasons why people should choose it. Now, if you deleted something by mistake, oh my goodness, what do I do? I wanted to keep this. Don't worry, don't panic. If you click on this, you have the history. If you click on that, you can always move back to a previous point in time. So, as you can see, now we're back with our three columns, as you can see. And you can always go back further in time, all the time, as long as you don't leave this window, you'll be able to access all the, the history. Now, let's say you don't want any of those stuff. If you wanted to get rid of one of them, maybe you say, oh, this is a bit too much, or I don't need it at all. Or you can just click on it, as, uh, to, to just click on it, and then on the X, and then delete the section. It's it, done. 
And all you have is a clean place to drop that section. If you think it's redundant or unnecessary, you don't need all these, you can always do that the same way. Now, what if you wanted to add a section now? Maybe you want to add a video underneath this section here. How do you do that? It's very simple. So I showed you how to use the X, is to delete, and you can use the plus, the plus sign to add. So select your section, so it's underneath this one, so it'll be here, and click on the plus. And this will can start to section in between those two, basically. And then click on plus again here. And as you can see, you have to select the stru structure. So you want to be one column, two columns, three columns, four, maybe the sidebar on the left, sidebar on the right, and so on. So we're going to select the three column structure, section here, so I will can center our video in the middle. So click on this and I can see one, two, three sections. So we're going to go back here now into our element uh, elements, and we're going to select video. So how do you add something? Very simply, click on it, drag and drop it where you want it. So we're going to put it back on in the middle here. Just like that. That's it. Perfect. And now we're going to add a bit of spacing on top. So we click on our column here. We're going to advance. And as you can see, we can add margins or padding. So we're going to add a bit of padding on top. So we're going to unlink this. Then we're going to click on top. So you can use the arrow here. Arrow up. And then once you're happy with the spacing, you can just stop. So I'm 70 on top. I'm going to put 70 on the bottom as well. Equally, uh, evenly distributed. Now, this is absolutely fine. Now, if you check in our video here, you can see you can have a YouTube video, you can have Vimeo, Dailymotion, and self-hosted. So, self-hosted, basically, we're going to upload our video straight onto our server, or we can use any of those existing services. So, we're going to just keep the video for now by the way it is, but you can put your YouTube link here, if obviously, you so, if you find that this video is a bit too small, so that you stand out enough, maybe you can reduce our columns here, make it a bit uh, smaller on the left hand side. So, all you have to do, you can see the line if you have on top, you have the double arrow here, we can adjust the, the width, and then you can just drop it, drop or uh, drag it, sorry. And as you can see, you have a percentage. So, maybe you're going to put 20% uh, uh, on one side. There you go. So you can either do it this way or you can click on it like this. Then change the column width. So you're going to put 20% here. You can do it manually or just drag and drop as we did. And as you can see, now our video is perfectly centered in the middle. So maybe you want to add a background color to your section now. So how do you do this? Click on those six dots. You're going to style. And as you can see, we have a background. So we can select the background type. So we can have a classic full color, plain color, which is just one color. We can have a gradient. We can even add a video if you wanted to. Or you can have a slide show. So we're going to just add a color for ourselves here. And maybe we're going to change this to a, a light gray, maybe. Just a light gray. A very light gray. Or maybe a blue. Why not? Let's go with blue. A very light blue. Just like that. And then we can update. Okay, so let's have a quick look at the results. Okay. And as you can see, now if we scroll down, we have our video right there underneath it. So, what about uh, you might want to put some explanation what this video is all about? So, you want to add a heading. So, again, how do you do this? Very simply, you're going to your elements, select heading, and then draw and drop it where you want it to be. So as you can see, we're going to have it and drop it on top of the video. And you want this heading to be maybe centered, and you don't want it to be too big. So you're going to select the HTML tag here, which is H3, H4, and so on. And then you can put the text here. So you can say a time lapse of our latest job on site. Not I could be introductory video or something like this. And again, let's have a quick look at our website now. And as you can see now we have our head heading right on top of the video. So this is uh, how you actually change and customize pages. So to our pages here, we're just gonna leave this now. It's all up there as you can see pages. 
and you can do the same with the about us, the contact page, the FAQ, and, and so on and so on. So let's have a look at the about us. As you can see, you can see this heading picture, all the content here, whatever it is, you know, all very simply by using the Elementor page builder right here. Now let's see how we can change our menu because we cannot change our menu straight from Elementor. We have to do it uh, differently. So for this, we go back to our WordPress dashboard and then we're going to go into appearance and then customize. There you go. And as you can see, we have our logo here and then our menu. So how do we change our menu? Very simply, as you can see, if we hover on top, you have a small pencil showing up. If you click on this, We'll be able to change this phone number, and if we click on that, we'll be able to change our logo. So, let's say you have a logo already for your company, I believe you do, and you want to change it. So, basically, click on this, and for that, all we have to do is click on change logo or remove. You can delete it first, so change logo, and we're going to upload our logo. So, we're going to select files. And I want to have them download it for uh, a sample logo here for a planning company. And then select. And then you can crop it or not, or you just skip. If it doesn't fit in, it's fine. Don't worry about it. You can just skip. Or you can select the whole thing. It's up to you, really. So if you wanted to crop it, it's up to you, really. If you want to limit the space up and down, then you can crop the image or just skip. And as you can see, our logo is not displaying. So if it's not displaying, you might have to change the so we select this option here. It says different logo for retina devices. So if we activate this, and you can see there's another logo right here. And you want to remove this one or change it again and select your new logo again once more. So change image, select this one, choose image. Because basically, depending on the type of device uh, your user, your visitor is using, it will display one or the other. So if it's a high resolution screen, because I'm using a 4K screen, it's using the retina logo. If it was on the phone, for instance, we will be using the other one. So that's it. So after that, you're happy enough, and then you click Publish. Now, as you can see, the logo is a bit disproportionate. It's a bit too big compared to everything else. So what you do, need to do is to change the logo with. So if you're going to click on this, you have that slider here, and you can uh, slide left or right to actually fit in perfect. So once you find found the, the exact spot, the perfect size, just leave it as is and then click on uh, publish. That's it. And if you go back to our homepage, now on our website, and click, as you can see, we have uh, our new logo on our website. So, how do we change this phone number here? Again, let's go back to this first phone and we click on this now, the small pencil, and we're going to put in our number here. So, if you click on text or visual, is the same. Basically, visual is as it is, basically. In fact, this is with HTML code, so I would not advise you to check the HTML code unless you know what you're doing. You might use the visual, but if you want to use the HTML code here, you can just change the phone number in between those tags. As you can see, we have strong tags and, uh, and strong, which is for bold text, and you can change the content here. If you do it this now, then put a phone number for 01 334 5678. And then you can publish. Now, if anyone goes on your website, so let's go back to our homepage now again. And as you can see, planning companies serving uh, the Greater London area, the reason why they should trust you, a custom, uh, request a custom code here, and your phone will go right on top. So it's very easy for anyone landing on your page now to get in touch with you and request a quote. So, how do we change those uh, many buttons now about our servicing of? Frequently asked questions from contact. So let me find it this now. So we're going to leave this page now. Let me go into appearances, appearance, sorry, and then menu. And as you can see, this is our main menu. So top nav, because this is our top navigation. So as you can see, we have home, about us, services, frequently asked questions, and contact. So let's go back to our website. This is it. This is the exact five tabs. Now let's say you don't want an FAQ, you don't have no need for that. All you want to do is home the borders, privacy, and contact. You want to get rid of this one. So let's go back here. As you can see, these are our tabs. All you have to do is just to click on this, and you can click remove. 
And then after that, you save it. If we go back to our page and refresh, as you can see, the FAQ page is now gone completely. And it won't be, it will not be accessible anymore. So if you wanted to add something else, maybe a personal link, maybe you want to send a link to your Facebook page or I don't know, something like this, a personal page maybe, you can always add something here. So you can add a custom link, for instance. So let's say I wanted to add a link to Mr. Web Review. And I'm going to call this custom link, just for the sake of our a demo here, and then I'm going to click on Add to Menu. And as you can see, you can drag and drop it wherever you want. So if it's against the edge, like this, in line with the others, if I save this, and I refresh, we have another tab here, custom link, as you can see. Now, if I was to put this underneath, for instance, this one, but with an indentation, indent it from the, the side, and then save it. And this becomes a sub menu, you see? So you have home, about us, and then the custom menu as a sub menu part of the about us section. So under the about us, you could have about us, the company history, mission statement, and so on and so on. So you can create different pages basically, you know? So just for now, just gonna remove this. You can read it and then save again. So there you go. So we now have four pages all about our services and contacts. And now let me show you how to change the footer here. So because we have copyright 2021 London Promise, powered by London Promise, how can you change those settings? And then we're going to customize, go to our WordPress dashboard, appearance, customize, and this time we're going to footer. And as you can see, we have footer widgets. That's not the one we need, and then we put the bar. As you can see, your copyright, current your site title, powered by the site title. Now you can leave as is, or you can change it and then make it your own, obviously, you know. But this will fetch basically all the information automatically uh, to fill out with the actual details of your website. So where are these uh, details coming from? As you can see, site title and current year and, and so on. Basically, if you go back here now, these are our settings. And we're going to general. So as you can see, this is our site title. This is where this information here is coming from. So basically, the, the name of your site. And then here you can put a detail, a tagline. What is it that you do? From permitting services, and then greater London Arena. Keep it simple again, as I said, you know. And then all you have to do is just save it and that's it. Let's say if I was to click here and put best London plumbers and save. We're going to check our website and refresh. And you can see now it's reflected back here. It says best London plumbers, best London plumbers instead of London plumbers. So we've covered our homepage, content, we have the footer and menu done. And then let me see now we have the about us. You can do the same basically with the about us section, you know, over this page. You can do this with services, you can do that with the contact page, all together about this thing, you know, very easy indeed. So the last thing, once you're once you happy with your website and you're ready to go for live, what you do basically, do not forget this is your last step. Click on maintenance. And then switch it off and then save changes. And now your website is available for the world to see. So there you go, guys. This is how you can create your own website for your own business. Again, I hope you found this helpful. If so, please consider giving me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.